Now the one thing that we will have to do whenever you put lithium batteries in, if you do it this way, same with the Mercedes Tesla cells like you saw in a previous video a long time ago, is that these struts have to be angle grinded out. Now um, I was worried that it would change the integrity of the seats structure, but um, they actually seem pretty strong, especially once they're bolted in. There isn't any movement, so you should be okay. I mean, alternatively, what you can do is when you see how far the batteries come back, you could put an extra strut in. Like I was thinking of maybe fixing a triangular piece just into here, just a flat piece of triangle, um, maybe even bolted up inside here. Uh, you can get some of those at B&Q actually, just a triangular piece that you can bolt up. Now, um, as long as the batteries don't come back that far, that may be okay, but um, from my experience with the other one um, that we did in Cornwall, um, there wasn't any real loss of integrity on the seats. I was just trying to see if I can get them fitted into the car so that's one less worry and good news. After cutting that bar out, as you can see there's perfect clearance down here. It's actually spot on. And there's even room back here to put an extra brace in if we really wanted to. Just a triangular, triangular piece of metal in that corner perhaps. And bolt that or screw it or weld it to the seat and that should give that should give some extra support so that works that's good news so I'm going to pull the seat back out and um, store it until we have the batteries properly wired up now I'm, I am also debating on getting a battery box made up at some point that can go over the top of these and basically protect it from the seats and also protect it in case something does happen to go wrong. There's enough room on this side to get a bit fitted. Unfortunately not much room on that side. So um, what I was thinking of doing was having it faced on three ways. So it's protecting you from the legs, from the sides and from the top. 
if anything does happen it will vent backwards and it will give you enough time to get out the car in theory so um but these batteries are pretty safe so i doubt there's going to be any problem with them as not unless unless you puncture them or do something silly so that's the good news for today i've got the seats fitting perfectly so now i'm just waiting for the fuses and the rest of the stuff in the post before i can continue with the rest of the work and what i've also done is just mapped out where i am putting the other batteries i've put a basic clamp in um, i've put this part in because the batteries will just unclip and slide straight out of this lip and I've put one side of the, uh, the support in at the side so I can easily screw in the other side when it comes to doing that and then all the wiring coming out will bolt to here just like you can see down here it will come out and I'll be able to bolt it all into here and then finally I've just got to build a higher boot end so that all the batteries are protected underneath a bit of board where I can put all my luggage and all sorts and then maybe make it look nice with a carpet. We'll see. So um, yes, yeah, so we're almost there. I've just got to do the final bits and then I can book it in for its MOT. So the fuses came today. I've got, I've got 12 of these 100 amp 100 amp mega fuses and uh, what I'm doing is bolting them into the positive terminals off of each battery and I'm putting shrink wrap over that just to keep this uh, this part of the terminal covered and then that just goes back into the box onto there so um, that's that and uh, so that will give me that will give me my uh, fused connections to each individual pack so that if for any reason one of the pack goes faulty and shorts out or does something weird it won't go to the other packs it will just um, it will just blow a fuse and uh, separate itself from everything Right, so a bit more progress. I've done all of these six connections to ready with fuses. Now I did put tape on the stuff down below, but this comes back so far that it probably doesn't need tape on that. And um, there won't be anything exposed. So that's the um that's the positive fuses already. These go down into here and they'll go up against the positive terminals here. Now uh what I'm just a little bit concerned about is whether it's going to the plastic modules are going to actually fit here they may or may not that's going to be something we'll have to find out when I put it all together but I mean I should find a way anyway but that's all the fuses in onto these terminals too and uh, those are ready for connecting these modules up which I'm not going to do until I get the rest of the parts in which I think as yes, it's Friday today um, I don't think that's going to happen until Monday now so I'll probably rest over the weekend I think I've done most of the hard work I've got the car insured today as well so that's all that's all done ready well it doesn't start till the 2nd of October so that gives me time to get this to get this ready to put on the road and get it for its MOT. So good progress today. Uh, unexpected because I didn't think I'd have anything in the post, but that that essentially prepares everything. Uh, the seat's done, ready to go in once uh, once I've uh, once I've done this. Just wanted to give you some good news if you are thinking of. If you're watching this and you're thinking of converting a GWiz to lithium. Now um, some people may have seen my previous videos in the past mentioning vaguely that uh, about the insurance and in terms of whether this is classed as a modification and I just wanted to get a clearer answer when I was getting this car insured today so I was speaking to Adrian Flux, uh, a nice chap who we had a, quite a good conversation with and he confirmed quite clearly 
that no you do not need to you do not need to notify the insurer at all that the GWIS has been converted to lithium because it's still running on electricity and that's why he said it's still running on electricity so it doesn't matter what battery chemistry you're using unless you change it out to a different kind of fuel then there is no need to declare uh, a change of batteries in the electric car so that's some really good news just to, just for those who want a bit more clarification in that respect um, and I also um, I also took the back seats out the G was was actually registered as a two-seater but um, I took the back seats out and he also confirmed that there isn't hardly any rise on the insurance with that there's only there's only something like a 12 pound rise for turning it into a boot space instead so um, it's not terrible it's not a terrible price with Adrian Adrian flux now the issue is with them is they do charge you more if you've only just bought the car if you've owned it for a year or more the insurance premium drops significantly this car has dropped about a hundred pounds in insurance for the second year this one is the same price as what I paid for this car two years ago so the next year it will go down and it will stay down it will go down again on the third year so Adrian flux are relatively okay um, if you only want to rent the, if you want to, only want to insure the G Wiz. so there we go that was just a bit of good news in terms of the batteries and so you can go ahead change them out put whatever chemistry you want in them and you don't have to notify the insurance at all because it's still running on electricity